wheel cleaning. It is one of the most important aspects to the detailing process. And we always say, you know. You're gonna notice that this wheel cleaner instantly turns your wheels purple. Notice how it's turning red. You'll notice that it starts to turn purple. You're just gonna notice there's a little bit of purple coming. Uh, something we've never have explained to you guys is why this product turns purple once it hits this wheel. Um, and you know, I think uh, the perfect person to help explain that to us is Chris, our chemist. We'll rinse this wheel off and we're gonna head over and we're gonna talk to Chris about our wheel cleaner. How's it going, Chris? Hey, Joe, welcome back. Yep, good to be back. You know, we're teaching people about wheel cleaning. We, we, you know, say use our wheel cleaner and when you spray it on, it turns purple and it breaks down the metallic particles in the brake dust, but there's no real explanation as to what is really happening. It's just turning purple, you know? So what I'm curious about is what is it in the formulation of wheel cleaner that makes it turn purple and, you know, why doesn't it turn blue or yellow or whatever? Sure. So this is something that we call thioglycolic acid. So this is a uh, molecule that has some oxygen groups on it, a sulfur group, and this is kind of the thiol group in the word thioglycolate. So this is the reactive portion that will complex with metal ions of all sorts, particularly the stuff that you're talking about in your brake dust and everything. And when it complexes with these things, it turns into ferric thioglycolate, and that's where that red or violet or a plum color will originate from. So we get a lot of questions of like, oh, is that some sort of a dye that you're adding or pigmentation to indicate? And it's not, it's actually a natural phenomenon of the complexing of the molecule with the contaminants. Is this an extension of this or? Yep. You've got a metal ion here and there's a overall negative charge on the oxygens and on the sulfurs and they'll complex with this oxidized iron um, ion here. In this, in this image, I've got them bonded, but in reality, it's more of an electrostatic kind of grouping. And as these um, thioglycolates complex with this, this will actually produce that plum color. And when you rinse it away, all of this goes away. Like on my wife's car, we have, a, we have a Ford Explorer. It's not like a performance vehicle by any means. But when I spray this on those wheels, it doesn't turn purple. Is that, is it, not being effective. What you're complexing is metal ions. So if there isn't any metal ions present, you're not gonna see that purple because that complex isn't gonna happen. So it's important to understand though, that if you're not seeing the purple, that doesn't mean that the product's not working. We have a lot of other surfactants, um, chelates, and other sorts of ingredients within this blend that will allow it to effectively clean your rims. And just because you don't see the purple doesn't mean it's not actually working. How did you come up with this formulation and how does that work? So when you're using a product like Wheel Cleaner, it doesn't really care where those metal ions are coming from. So when you have a decorated finish, like something that's been electroplated, it's going to see that decorative finish and it's gonna attack it just like it would normal break um, dust and things like that. So when you go to something like Eco Wheel Cleaner, it's pH balanced just like the other product. However, the choice of surfactants and ingredients in there are much more green and safer choice focused, as well as you don't have thioglycolate in that blend. So now you don't have the ability to make that complex. Can you Kind of explain to me this stuff more in depth, like on a whiteboard of how this some, some of this stuff works. Sure, yeah, I'll under, help you understand why they call it thio. Cool. All right, Chris, so looks like you put some stuff here. Is this yeah. theoglycolate? It's actually thioglycolate, Joe. So what we've illustrated here is a thioglycolate complex or a ferric thioglycolate complex. The operative word here is the functional group thio. So that's this R bonded to sulfur bonded to hydrogen. The sulfur is what's responsible for that really nasty rotten egg smell that everyone smells. Okay. This is the complex of two thioglycolate molecules with one iron cation. Yep. So you can think of it as two of these molecules interacting with it in such a way okay. that it's creating a complex. And so what that iron comes from is your brake pads breaking down on your rotors and creating that dust. And so as this complex happens, you'll get that plum color because of the refractive index of light changing. I see, so the metallic brake dust that's represented by, I mean, it is iron. Yep. And then once the formulation of the wheel cleaner, which is this, right, yep. gets sprayed on and then these come together with the ionic bond and then, then purple and then what happens? Once you go to rinse, all of this is kind of statically stuck together and it all rinses away together at once. Time out, time out, time out. Can we please not talk about thioglycolate for a second? 
Yeah, it seems like every time you're talking about a wheel cleaner, Thag like like seems to come up. Yeah, exactly. So what I want to discuss is in the marketplace, there are wheel cleaners that don't have thal glycolate in it. Yep. Um, and that's something like our wheel and tire cleaner. Yep. How is this, you know, how is this an effective product, uh, you know, when cleaning wheels? So very much like what's in your wheel cleaner, you have thal glycolate specifically to attack brake dust, right? And that's the metallic version of brake dust. But you're also gonna have a lot of grime, road um, debris, um, dirt and things like that, that you need other surfactants, you need other chemistries, you need chelation, you need um, all kinds of other things to sort of break down that grime and that, that, uh, those deposits. And thioglycolate's only gonna attack one combination of that. So we have a lot of other stuff built into your wheel cleaner. We have even more built into something like this. I see, so is, would this be more along the lines of like a beefed up APC or something yep. like that? Yep, so while you could use these other products to kind of effectively do an all-in-one on the wheel, you're gonna have a lot of agitation required. You're probably gonna have to do several passes to break through all the grime. When I spray this on here, it turns brown. What you're seeing here is a combination of it removing the dirt and contaminants that are on the tire, but you're also gonna be removing a lot of the oxidation on the tire, and they call that blooming. Okay. And the trick here is to get the wheel cleaner to be aggressive enough to remove all that contamination and oxidation, but not so aggressive that it actually hurts your wheel finish or your uh, dries out your tires. I and see. that's kind of the balance that we're striking in the wheel and tire cleaner. Cool. Yeah, so look at that. That's like pitch black. I mean, yep. that's amazing. From what it was before. Now this is a pretty aggressive <clears throat> wheel and tire cleaner. So common sense always applies, right? Mm -hmm. Don't apply it on a hot surface and don't apply it um, and allow it to reside for an overly long time. It should be one tire at a time and it should be a very quick and effective process. Yeah, all right, well, let's jump back into the lab and get back into thiol glycolate. Sure. All right, cool. But one of my other questions is something like iron remover. <clears throat> you know, does this, does this have the same uh, thiol glycolate that's in wheel cleaner yep. so why couldn't i just take this and spray my whole car so the idea behind these two is what the type of substrate you're working on so remember from our previous video we talked about designing a product specific to the process you're trying to match yeah like in the case of iron remover it's literally designed with no viscosity in mind so that means it has no rheology modifier nothing that makes it have any cling or grab or um, thickness to it. And that's specifically so that when you're decontaminating your paint, it can hit the surface and it'll do what we call wetting out and it'll try and spread to as far as it possibly can and that allows it to be a much more effective um, reactant on those sorts of surfaces and find those iron contaminants lodged within your clear coat. In the case of wheel cleaner, you're working with a vertical surface now. Yeah. And so you want it to stick where, where you're applying it and not have it run off the tire too quickly. And so with that viscosity, it allows it to cling and react in complex um, more completely. So is there anything else that you could school me on with, with uh, wheel cleaner or any of this stuff? I actually happen to have a really good demonstration. I have a couple brake pads that we can look at. One's metallic and one's not. We'll show kind of that activity in that ferric thioglycolate complex forming right in front of our eyes. Okay, cool. That sounds awesome. Let me see this. Got a couple brake pads we've acquired here. One's ceramic and one's metallic. And so what I wanted to show you here was the product interacting in real time on these surfaces. This would be metallic. So we're gonna expect this to turn purple when we apply the wheel cleaner and this one is ceramic. So it's not gonna change colors. I see, okay. So this would be like spraying your wheels that have brake dust all over them. And kind of the idea we were talking about with yeah. like my wife's Ford Explorer, like they clearly have ceramic brake pads because it doesn't turn purple when I spray the wheels. Yep, so as you can imagine, as this continues to break down on your rotors, it's gonna create a lot of dust. And these kind of brake pads are particularly important on high performance vehicles, so they'll be a lot more apparent. And so when you use a product like wheel cleaner on those kinds of vehicles, the purple will be a lot more apparent. Whereas if you're using something that doesn't have those kind of brake pads and you're not really doing performance uh, driving, you're not going to see that purple quite as heavily. Yeah. So as you can see, the longer it sits, the more that complex is going to form and you're going to get that purple color generated. Oh yeah, look at that. That's crazy. 
Yeah, so hopefully you know a lot more about uh, wheel cleaners and how all these things work and hopefully this was helpful for you today. It's just cool to have kind of a behind the scenes feel to what the product's doing while you're spraying it on. You see it turn purple, you know it's not, oh, they just made this look cool for us. It's not like that at all. You know, yep. that's like the real, you know, that's like, as you can see, it's like the real chemical reaction that's happening. Yeah, until next time. I'll see you next time, Chris. Take Thank you.